Hey everyone, I'm here with John C. Dvorak, and he was an author for PC Magazine since the 80s and was recently let go under circumstances which include him writing an opinion piece on 5G, which is not necessarily in line with um, sort of the, the industry perspective on it. It was a bit critical on 5G. So we're here to, today to talk about that and his experiences um, you know, and, and knowledge and what he's uh, been researching about 5G and other topics. John is, since 1976, he's been uh, involved in computers and he's been uh, a, a writer and a columnist uh, on uh, technology since, since the 80s. And he uh, runs a, or, or with co-host Adam Curry, he has a podcast called The No Agenda Show, which has a reach of over a quarter million uh, listeners. So, John, welcome to um, this podcast. Yeah, good to be here. So, we'd love to just dive right in. And, and a lot of people are, are looking at this and they're seeing this article that, was, that you posted or this opinion piece on PC Magazine, which is now no longer there at the original link. It was replaced with, with uh, another piece and you were let go. And so, what happened? I noticed like after that happened that one of my columns was replaced by another column on the same topic by a different writer. Uh, and it was very clearly uh, shown if you, I did a whole document on it that ran on medium, which apparently you can't get. Um, anyway, I showed that it was like this kind of weird that I'd written this column on, on 5g. It wasn't really that it's not column there. It's not really that critical. It's mostly talking about the critical talking about the critics or who are, who are, worried about it yeah that's really what it was about i don't have any personal criticism at the moment or right. i'm starting to develop them now yeah. um and so they replaced this with some oh 5g is the greatest and i thought that was a little suspicious yeah so here's the original column it's still on pc mag but well they re they, they put it back up link. after people complained okay so they put it back up they put it on a different link so it originally went down but they replaced the original link with uh, with this piece by Sasha Sagan. Yeah, Sasha Sagan's What is 5G? 5G is real. Yeah. Is on there and it's all this 5G promotion. Yeah. Okay. So at what point during this process were you uh, let go or your contract terminated? Oh, it was, well, it, it was a couple of weeks before they changed the column, swapped the column out. Okay. So, so it wasn't like column swapped, I'm fired. No, it was like I did, a, I think, one or two more columns after that. And then they swapped this column out in the background. I also found it uh, peculiar. I did write to them. I had one of the editors, my w wife is in contact, bitching. Yeah. Okay. And he says, oh, he never contacted us. I just contacted him. I asked all, everybody at the magazine, because I, I have this the distribution list, why was my column removed and replaced with this? I got nothing back. Hmm. Uh, that they haven't said anything to me since, the, uh, since this incident. So, so here, I'm suspicious, obviously, because it's my nature. And uh, now I'm uh, starting to uh, look into this a little more. Uh, you turned me on to the professor at University of California at Berkeley, and I am uh, I'm gonna we're gonna put up a 5G page called debate5g.com. Mm -hmm. Is pretty sounds neutral. I think it will be. Yeah, we're going to see what what comes of this because it sounds to me as though there's something going on here with 5G that's that's not in the best interest of the public, or otherwise all these things wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So there is, you know, as as our audience knows, um, when you start looking into the science and the facts of of 5G and how they're kind of ramming it through, it it does the natural inclination without going into anything conspiracy is to wonder why why are they pushing it through and why are they ignoring um you know so many uh cities and and individuals who are not wanting it and there's even um uh, there's hundreds apparently hundreds of cities uh have have uh, and city councils and mayors have have said we're going to sue you if you the fcc said to the fcc that they're going to sue the fcc if they continue to push the agenda through and take away the rights of cities to choose what infrastructure gets uh, deployed in their areas and, and how. So this is developing to be a huge story. It's almost like a science fiction movie. Yeah. Why are these guys, you know, they silence anyone who says anything bad to say, 
And yeah, there's always these crackpots out there that are going to say bad things about any new technology because there's a Luddite vein that runs through all of society. But in this situation where you find too many of these things happening, and they're happening on a, on a strange basis, and there's this rush to get 5G out there, you have to wonder why. What, the, what, is, what is going on? This is not normal. This is not the normal kind of pushback. This is abnormal. And uh, now it's, it, it makes you wonder. You have to look into it. Did you hear about, uh, I think it was last year sometime, there was a, an Australian journalist named Marianne Damasi who got fired for doing a critical piece on Wi-Fi in schools and the, looking at the science and the health effects and the reports of, of, of negative effects on, on there. Have, did you hear anything about that yet? Yeah, I have. I, there's a, the Wi-Fi thing is another, what, here's what's going to happen. I think these guys better be aware of this, the, 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 uh, the radio guys yeah. that make these systems. Uh, this, if this 5g thing goes through and it turns or, or, if, or if it starts becoming a big issue and people become more aware, I'm reminded of the era of the MP3. The MP3 was an inconsequential technology during the, uh, period of time in the night, I believe it was the early nineties that college kids were using to exchange music, steal music and exchange it for free in the file sharing method before, uh, a couple of MP3 players came along and one of them before iPad, before the iPod came out and the end, uh, the record industry, RIAA sued them and made a big stink about it and drew a lot of attention to MP3s and people started looking at it and saying, Hey, this is cool. Look at all this free music I can get. The next thing you know, piracy went nuts and everybody went crazy about the MP3 because it was, because it, it got, the public, the public's attention. This is the same thing. We're going to see the public get too much. They're going to start questioning Wi-Fi uh, as a result of the five G thing. Yeah. And you're going to. This is going to be a huge problem for these these mechanisms. I don't know how it's going to end up, but uh, there's a lot of information out there. I, I was turned on by this professor that you told me about at University of California at Berkeley. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's a public health specialist. And he's got web pages filled with links of, you know, this is bad. Here's why it's, you know, this, it's just unbelievable. So I'm now, thank you. Uh, I kind of have to probably maybe thank PC Magazine and the 5G people for uh, making me aware because I was actually kind of naive and I'm, I'm picking up the slack here. Yeah. Good work. <laughs> Good. Well, I'm just <laughs> going to share a couple more links here just with our audience. So this is... Um, this is, you mentioned Joel Moskowitz there at Berkeley. He's, he's kind of one of the scientific you know, researchers and uh, you can see the director of the Center for Family and Community Health um, School of, of Public Health in Berkeley. So he's got um, Safer EMR is his website here. And if you just go on the right, right hand side, you can see um, a lot of significant research here about 5G and there's about four or five links which, um, which are, are helpful for anyone to get a, a to speed he's asking is 5g harmful to our health and then looking at specific um, peer-reviewed studies on these higher frequencies so what is 5g 5g is essentially it's the next the fifth generation of wireless infrastructure which is being deployed by the fcc or actually by communications companies through use, using the fcc so they now control the fcc according to harvard ethics um, and they're deploying these basically every between every two and 10 homes uh right in front of the home so throughout all neighborhoods there's there's um th this is in the process of being deployed uh in, in a very quiet way without public uh discourse and with using you know very strong pr and propaganda campaigns that uh, 5g is a good thing you're going to be able to download movies in seconds meanwhile it's using higher frequency bandwidths from uh i think it's 24 to 70 gigahertz and above so this is it's not five gigahertz that's a, kind of a misnomer or a, in my opinion it's a uh it's like a purposeful obfuscation the whole they see five john you know what i'm talking about when you log yeah i know uh, you see 5g you think five gigahertz you think five gigahertz and even on your wi-fi router if you log in and there's either 2.4 or 5g usually that isn't actually 5g so that's being kind of no, it's a different technology with similar nomenclature right 
right. So that might be, I think it's my, my opinion, John, is that's being done purposefully to kind of norm. Yeah, I never thought of that. Right. Normalizing people's acceptance of 5G. Oh, it's already in my router. It already says 5G in my router. But it's something totally different. It's um, uh, 24 and, and, and higher gigahertz. And uh, so this research that uh, Joel Moskowitz and many, many other scientific researchers are, are, are bringing forward is, um, is very, uh, it, it, it's, look, it's, it's looking very, you know, very bad for, for, for the public health. Yeah, I think it might be he might be onto something here. Uh, but you know, it's just it's howling in the wind if he doesn't get more support from the uh, tech community. The tech community uh, and tech writers of business uh, is really about, is turned into almost it's something you've been fighting for probably since the late seventies. Uh, it's turned into a bunch of cheerleaders, and uh, so whatever goes, and it's not as though they're getting paid to be cheerleaders uh, that I know of. But they're cheerleaders, and it's uh, it's not helping anybody. Yeah, just to go back to this, what you and I were talking about before we um, started recording here was that uh, you wrote an article on Medium.com, and uh, you're you were kind of outlining your experience with, you know, this whole journey of of, of being let go by the episode. The episode. <laughs> And just, just asking questions and just putting the facts out there and asking questions. You sent me the link. Here it is. If I click that, now this this comes up for you still. But for me, if I click that, this is what I get. I get medium.com suspended and this page is unavailable. And so you and me are trying to figure out why that is. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to my regular page, which would be medium.com at Dvorak. Right, which I did. Which you can do. Um, try that too. Yeah, just that Dvorak. So that you should get the you should get my page, but you don't. No. You don't. I do. Yeah. And I think others do because they see comments. Um, I don't know if they're running a bozo filter or if you've got something you got a, a special a special cookie you can't get rid of that's on there saying this guy is bad news. Let's don't let give him anything uh, that has anything to do with five G because you're obviously outspoken about it. You're doing this podcast for example, uh, maybe there's something like that going on. I don't know, but I find this to be ext extremely suspicious. And I'll just add to the background on this. You actually have a VPN. You turned it off. You couldn't get the page. You turned it on. You'd move the VPN location to Canada. Yep. You still couldn't get the page. And so this is a very, uh, very strange situation, I have to say. Yeah. So, but like you said, you are getting recent comments on the article, which is coming up for you. So if you're watching this, if you could just make a comment, let us know if you're, if you're getting the article. And, and again, all of the relevant links are in the description of this video. No, I, I mentioned that I could imagine that PC Magazine, I don't know why Medium would pay any attention to them, but PC Magazine could say, because they did repost the column eventually. Right. Say, hey, this is bull crap because we reposted the, oh, no, they wouldn't say reposted. We have the column. It's still up. Look, here it is. This is here. So this guy is full of crap. He just hates us. And so the medium guys could put it in abeyance and put a bozo filter on so it looks like I can see it and you can't. That's always possible, but it, that's pretty lame if that's true. Yeah. I've never had any problems like this before. I don't think it's my... Um, computer and uh, I yeah it's it's confusing to me why why it's coming up for you and, and not not for me so yeah like if you're watching this comment let us know if it's coming up for you so I, I you know and the, the other thing is if 5g is a health issue uh, I think it really doesn't help uh, when you start bringing in other you know you start sc scatter shotting uh, your target yeah. uh, in other words uh, talking about yes I've seen people try to do this sort of argument where you have a target that's very clear and it's very simple. And instead of just sticking with it and going after it, they say, well, and there's also this and there's also that, and it also does a bad name and it's, it's contradictory. And then there's other, th th it, no, just stick with the one topic. I don't care about surveillance mm -hmm. uh, as part of the argument. Okay. Personally, I just think it's, it's, it's watering down the, the target. Well, you know, that's really, that's worth talking about right there. And I appreciate that perspective because when I uh, made Take Back Your Power, I went on this journey starting in late 2011. It took me a couple of years to make the documentary. I just kept finding, John, one thing after another. 
that w was a huge red flag about these smart meters. You know, it, first it was the health because my friend was getting sick. And then it was the privacy, and then it was homes getting l literally burned down, uh, and and it was um, the hackability of the home. So basically, your power and anything in your house becomes an open gateway, and then it's the cost going up because these meters weren't even they don't even measure accurate. Like if you're watching, no, they're terrible. These meters are ridiculous. When it comes to this five G thing, I think it's easier if it's targeted for one really bad thing. Um, because the, you have to, you know, the problem with the smart meters, they're in, in most areas where they, they put them in. Yeah. Um, and to get them out, you really, I think you have to do a lot of leveraging it. it I think it's, it's a, it's a case by case thing with 5g. And I think it's also the kind of, you get, you want to get away from, I think you want to get away from the kind of always seem as a, as the nut case, uh, oh, we're, everybody, they're spying on us, everything, you know, big brothers watching and all this sort of thing. Yeah. When uh, 5g is argument is, oh, no, you get better bandwidth and you're going to have a, I, I don't think the bandwidth is that bad right now personally, but you get better bandwidth. You're going to love your phone more, uh, which that is a bad thing, but I am not going to concentrate on it. Yeah. When you have a very simple health issue, which seems to be, and and also the health issue will lead into going after all the other technologies. Uh, it just seems so much stronger that you don't want to lose focus. I, th I think it's a it's a lose focus concept yeah. in a public relations way. Uh, and and another thing is I think important, but the other thing is you have the counter counter uh, public relations people, the people that are arguing for it. If you start scatter gunning your complaints about 5G into all sorts of different categories, they'll come at you with, well, no, this has been proven that this thing is not going to, they're not doing surveillance with this. They're using this other technology and they'll just pound away and they'll take away from the strong argument and make a big point of your mistake. Right. So you're, you're asking, you're opening yourself up to error yeah. if you're going to be uh, use um, pressure tactics uh, mm -hmm. on some point or other. Is this stuff, is this unhealthy or not? Yeah. Good point. You know what's what's interesting, John, is I noticed that when smart meters first came out, 2010-ish, uh, California was was uh, the first you know large region in the states to to get them, and in Canada it was Ontario. Um, and the the backlash that followed, the we saw some very strong evidence to indicate that the you know the media uh, and and the utilities and the you know the commercial hands at play within the mainstream media wanted the conversation just to be focused on the the wireless health effects so for example there was uh yeah. seattle times did a did an article i think in 2013 and it basically said you know privacy concerns about smart meters and health it kind of listed both in the title of the article um and then in the body of it um, as well as talked about both and that was within a week of that going live I don't know how long after that article went live just as one example It was changed to just the health concern. So the reason why that is John. I think is this is because you know, maybe now people are uh, Unfortunately kind of more accepting of surveillance state and it's kind of like well, it's too big to change I personally don't big don't believe that it that big corporate surveillance is too big to change. I just think it needs to be leveraged enough, which is what in power movement is doing. <clears throat> well, good. Like, I think somebody needs to do that. I, I'm not a fan of the surveillance state. Let's face it. Yeah, exactly. but, but I just want to, I just want to finish that point is that the, um, uh, they wanted us to only focus on the wireless health effects because they, they can go, you know, reference the FCC and said, well, if you have a problem with the wireless health effects and the wireless, you know, causing your, your health concern, take it up with the FCC and get them to lower the standard of, you know, to reduce the, the, the microwatts per meter squared at which it's considered unsafe. Because right now, as we know, most, mm. of the, you know, listeners know here that the, the, the scientific level for for un, you know for wireless technology being unsafe is way down here it's basically like one uh, uh what is it one milliwatt per uh per meter squared and it's basically ten thousand times higher 
the FCC's uh, uh, limit is approximately six to 10,000 times higher than that because it doesn't take into account all of the non-thermal effects. So this is a huge thing and they've been called out by the EPA, by the FDA, by the, um, you know, the, the wildlife uh, associations or the wildlife agencies in the, in the States. Many different agencies have called out the FCC and they said, this is old science. It's junk science. It needs to be updated. It's, it's you know, you're not looking at all of these thousands of studies that say on, uh, non-thermal effects. So what we what we we noticed was that with the smart meter matter, they wanted us to focus on that because they could just shift the blame to the FCC. But what you're saying now is there's kind of like a, a widespread movement of awareness towards people like having health effects, questioning, you know, wireless technologies. And now with all of this, you know, the the indications that 5G is taking all that harm to the next level, you're saying that's what we need to focus on, right? That's what I'm saying. Uh- not that wasn't in a nutshell, but that's kind of what I'm trying to say. I think uh, I, I I'm not an or I think you know another thing is if you're going to scatter gun, I think it's doable if it's all done separately. Uh, I've always felt that that when you have a number of issues with a technology that you want to target the technology to rid yourself of it. Uh, I think you could have a group that goes after the health effects, but doesn't go with the other stuff. They use, in other words, you target health. And then you could have another group that's just bitching and moaning about surveillance. I think that's a logical thing and a good thing to do. But that's what they should be doing. They shouldn't be, you know, this is a surveillance situation. This is bad. It's not good for the public. It's not good for the, anything. And, and, and by the way, it's not also not healthy and it's ugly. I mean, you just don't want to go into, you know, start adding, uh, adding issues to your target to your targeting. Uh, it's just the way you do it. You will have to be, so you'd have it, you could have a group that was m- disliking the surveillance possibilities of 5G and they would be concentrating their efforts on that one issue. Yeah. That I think is much more effective than the scattergun approach where you can get picked off because it, it just it works against you. Uh, yeah. that's, I've seen, and I've only say this like from a point of authority because I've observed it over the years. I've watched the way the different tech companies go after each other and the way Microsoft and IBM fought. And I've always seen uh, that when they get too scatterbrained about it and they're they're bitching about everything, uh, they, they lose focus and they get, they get sidetracked. They, they lose their punch. And that's what the other side, the bad guys in this case, uh, try to do. They try to make that happen. And you, it's harder to do if you just focus on one thing and just pounding and pounding and pounding about that one thing. This is the case. Uh, this is a similar situation uh, with fluoridation. Fluoridation is, which is, it turns out if you do any research on it, that seems to be a lot of propaganda that, you know, dentists all buy into it, but there's no real good research. The good research is quashed. Yeah. And it turns out that you look really start looking into it. I've always thought about putting a web page up about this because we had a problem at my second home in Port Angeles, Washington, where they the city council was dumping fluoride in the water that nobody wanted. It made the water taste like crap. We have delicious water up there. And so we started looking into it. My wife was running for city council at the time. And it turns out that all it was is it, the fluoride that they dump in municipal water supplies is industrial waste. Yeah. You can't not find that at the end of your research, that you're dealing with a bunch of industrial waste. They don't have any way of getting rid of it. But yeah, if you dump it into a reservoir of millions and millions of gallons of water, it gets dissipated. And, and then you've somehow co-opted the dentistry folk, uh, even though there's plenty of evidence that shows it doesn't do that much for your teeth. Uh, but you know, it, except for topical application, that's what the confusion is. It does a fluoride topical application directly on the enamel does have an effect, but this drinking it, you know, s- systematic drinking is not good, right. but it's like the, no one's been able to get this targeted in such a way. Uh, I think I could do it. I know exactly what the, what the mechanism is in, in, in this case. And so it gets watered down and nothing comes of the arguments and you have a, a lot of corruption small city councils that doesn't take much to come in there and wine and dine them and get them to agree with whatever you say. It's a problem. And this is a problem with 5g. I can see the same thing happening. Yeah. Oh, well, this is not industrial waste. Although I don't know that for a fact. Right. 
<clears throat> I mean, I mean what, what is this? What do, what do we need this for? What do we need 5G on every telephone pole? Now, you, I think, brought this up, and I've, I've read a little bit about it, too, which is the thing that kind of concerns me. Mm -hmm. Anybody who knows anything about microwaves knows that these high frequencies are not penetrative. They cannot go through anything. The they higher, cannot go... 5G frequencies, yeah. Yeah, the 5G milli, um, millimeter. millimeter wave, uh, terahertz would be the same thing. Yeah. They can't get anywhere. It's like uh, they can't just, they can't hit, they hit the wall and they just bounce off. They can't, I don't even know if they get through glass very well. And so as opposed to like 900 or like the, the normal uh, Wi-Fi, which goes really can go through six, seven walls or the, ant or the, uh, the RF radiation we get from a TV antenna. You have a transmitter on a hill. It's 30 miles away. It hits your house, goes through the whole house, through the bricks, and it hits an antenna in the back of the house, and you get a TV uh, image. Yeah. Those, are, those waves are, are penetrative. These aren't. So why are we using non-penetrating waves uh, to do, to do this, this phone technology? And I'm thinking, well, you can make them penetrate if you punch it up enough uh, to some outrageous wattage and you can get them to kind of come in the house so you can talk to, to the 5G connection on your phone in, in your kitchen. But who needs that? That means when you're outside, you're getting bombarded by a high, freak, uh, a high wattage signal uh, when you're not protected by your own home. It, this, this whole thing stinks. What's your perspective on from with being a tech writer and you know, you obviously have a love for computers, right? Yeah, I, I would say I was a hobbyist when it got me started. I still am. Yeah. So what is your perspective? I mean, are there people within industry and, and people within that tech world who are, are starting to really wake up about and ask questions about the, the health of, of, you know, the safety of wireless? Or, or are people like most, most people not there yet? I mean, what, what are you seeing? Uh, you know, these guys that are running the Silicon Valley during a, a boom time, which is, means they're making a lot of money, uh, and it comes and goes, uh, they tend to be pretty blind to anything that might stop the cash flow. Mm -hmm. And it's not like they don't think it's having a health effect or they actually look into it and they discover that it does and now they're concerned. They don't even get that far. As far as they're concerned, they look at the money and they say, there's a lot of money being made here. Oh, hey, Bill, there's a lot. There's some health effect issues. Ah, don't worry about that. That they can't be. Otherwise, the government would do something about it. I'm not, that's the last thing I'm going to worry about. And they just keep going ahead. So you end up with uh, situations like we're looking at. Yeah. I don't think they're, they're evil people uh, at all. I think that they're just, uh, they have one goal in mind, which is to make a lot of money. And they don't care about the consequences. Yeah. They do later when they get older and then they have to start giving all their money away. Then they're concerned. It, it just kills me. You know, I see these guys that have become billion, multi-billionaires by overcharging their customers for decades. And then they start giving the money away. Hey, how about you maybe giving the customers a break early on and maybe the customers can get some money too. But no, you don't see it. That never happens. Yeah. I don't even know why I'm complaining. <laughs> well, we need some more whistleblowers from within industry. That's, that's uh, for sure. Yeah, good luck. Well, some people are, are kind of realizing the situation we're in, I think, as, as, a, as a species. I mean, our civilization, we, we can't keep going like this. You know, whether you, you know, if you look at the way the Democrats and the Republicans are separated by certain ideologies and, and, and ideals, they each read, the, they read what they want to read. They read what reconfirms their concept of the world. And that's what you were seeing. You see that with 5G. You could say that all you want, but the guys aren't reading the, what's it, Moskowitz, the guy's name, and out of Cal, they're not reading that website. They're reading, you know, 5G's great. Yeah. And they read it and they got a bunch of quotes in there from different people. They know a lot of them. They say, oh, this is great. There's nothing wrong with this. I don't know what people are bitching about. And then they go on their merry way. That's just the way it's always going to be. Well, just have to be louder. Right. I don't know about always going to be, but that's the way it is right now. Just to look at this uh, website again, I wanted to share this with you, this page. It's on takebackyourpower.net. Um, uh, this is the Harvard Ethics Report that many of our, our viewers have, are familiar with. But this is, have you seen this, John, Captured Agency? Um, how the FCC is done. No, I have not. I got to read this. Now, you have to, to let's stop for a second here. Yeah. You got to realize that I was not enlightened about any of this stuff. Yeah. 
for the same reasons most of the people in Silicon Valley wouldn't be until I lost my job over writing an innocuous, mild 5G column. And I do believe that was the genesis. I could be wrong, but the coincidence is a little too much and I don't believe in coincidences. And uh, now I'm starting to get into it. So I have, I got a lot of catching up to do. I'm, I'm probably about, I'd say one fifth as far along as you are, if that. So no, I have So you can ask me if I read this, I read that. No, the answer is always going to be no. I have not read this. I will go read it. Okay, thanks. Thanks for um, clarifying that. I want to get your thoughts on this. So this is the about the FCC ruling from last month, a month ago uh, right now. And there was uh, the FCC chair and then three FCC commissioners. One of these commissioners was highly dissenting in her remarks to say, this is not the way that we want to go ahead and push 5G upon all these uh, 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 cities and municipalities um, across the country because they're going to fight back. And she's identifying here all these organizations, hundreds of cities have basically said, we, we don't want 5G. But they're, John, they're not saying it for the most part, because of the health matter. They're saying it because of the, the, the FCC is wanting just to implement it wherever they want to and take the, the zoning rights away from local government. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think about this idea? And we've, I've been posting about this and talking with other uh, leaders about this is like, now is a perfect time for people to team up with their local governments to, to su support the idea. Well, again, again, they're targeting. I think this is fine if you're targeting one thing, uh, right. which is, it sounds like, organization yeah, go ahead i mean they're targeting one thing they're not targeting health and they're not targeting surveillance and they're not targeting a lot of everything you can put in the into the pot uh, so i think it's fine that they're doing it that way but when that gets resolved what happens uh because it's not the it it's not a point of some it's not a it's not they're not targeting something that can't be resolved which is a weak thing uh, they're targeting something that can be resolved. And so the F5G can go ahead. The health effects can't be resolved, mm -hmm. which is why I think that they are the things that should be targeted. And this other stuff could go on as just just a more roadblocks because at some point, uh, the people pushing these technologies, there's two, the roadblocks become too much. They got to get people bitching about the health effects. They got another group bitching about the surveillance effect. You got these city, these city groups bitching about the taking their zoning rights back uh, and the bitching about the mandates. And at some point they just say it's too much work to fight all this stuff and they give up. That's the only way it ends up working out to the benefit of the public. Yeah. Uh, now that said that the old trick that I've seen, I've seen this a million times is they say 5g is that I'm predicting 5g is untenable. It's, it's dead. Uh, we are going to uh, redesign the system and we're going to call it 6g and it'll be 5g. So this is the kind of thing you always have to worry about winning uh, these, these battles because you, they'll come back at you with a, something that they, they, they do a dipsy do, you know, say, no, okay, we're you, you win, you win. We're going to do this instead. And what they're going to do instead is the same thing. Yeah. And that happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're in it, you're in it for the long haul. Well, yeah. I mean, here I, myself personally. Yeah, well, everybody that, you know. Yeah. I mean, people, once people get a, a, you know, woke up about what is that, what's happening here and how uh, our kids are being harmed, you know, with all this like industrial strength routers in, in school and there's a whole silencing campaign about that as well it's it's crazy but you know like you said i mean they're looking at the bottom you line. know they could i still think they could make a lot more money if they wired everything i do too <laughs> i don't understand like why where's the disconnect you think john how come they're not looking at the liability when big you know uh, uh in, insurance um meta organizations um around the world are some some of them have basically Lloyd's of London has said we're not going to insure wireless carriers for health effects because we're concerned that the long-term potential of it turning around and biting they need they it's like the Monsanto suit recently where the guy uh, the groundskeeper sued and got I don't know 30 40 million dollars from Monsanto's roundup uh, it's they need one good lawsuit that they can prove and make go over it's nice to have the, uh, 
And so one of the reasons you want to quash these questioning, the, the, the questioning and the, and the site like that Cal professor site, is that you don't want to see an accumulation of evidence be, because if a lawsuit shows up and they say, no, there's no evidence that anything like this has ever hurt anybody else, you know, we want it dismissed, and you dump on them like a tonnage of complaints and research and all this stuff that has been quashed or put aside or has disappeared, uh, they lose this lawsuit and then everybody's in a tizzy and the whole thing falls apart. That's what has to happen. Yeah. Somebody has to actually have a suit that works uh, and that will stop it. I mean, that would change everything. The Monsanto, what's happening with that suit has been fantastic. That was recently the judge. Yeah, it took forever for somebody to do that. Right. It's pretty well known. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the, every you know both times, both when the initial ruling came down and just a few days ago when uh, the judge affirmed that it should basically reduce it to what from 280 million to 77 million, but basically said there's that's it, you know, you have to pay that. Yeah, that's it, you're done. The other, you know, I mean, what you need is if wireless technology turns out to be the asbestos of the 21st century you're going to see unbelievable bankruptcies happening everywhere. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. And these companies and these school districts with the school. By the way, by the way, I think that little analogy is the one I'm going to go with. Say that again. I think the analogy is what I'm going to go with is, is, is 5G, let's target it, 5G, the asbestos of the 21st century is a little, one of those little sayings that you can put in the public domain, yeah. which would drive these guys crazy. That's, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Um, here, just on the screen here, here's a few links. Uh, I sent you a few of these, John, uh, a couple days ago. But uh, like I said, I mean, the science is really solid. It's just the PR and, and propaganda campaigns are, are trying to prevent discussion. So the question is, how do we you know, sort of have dialogue between the two and i would say uh having co-founded in power movement um which is a movement that's dedicated to uh holding the individuals responsible personally liable through commerce with a with a lot of uh financial liability that is real that that they don't want to pretend it's real but it's real it's enforceable that's kind of playing their game that's their language is money and so if we continue to try to get you know like you say that big lawsuit and hopefully i haven't seen one yet and all of the wireless you know uh, uh discussions and pushback has happened over um a couple decades now i haven't seen a big precedent setting uh, uh, uh lawsuit yet but i'm not saying that's not going to happen what i'm saying is let's keep pushing for that but at the same time we need to Come out, come at it from another angle, and and hold them individually liable using commerce. Let's spread awareness, you know, in other ways as well. But uh, I I believe that they're only looking at the bottom line. Their language is money, and they need to individually be be you know um, point pointed out and and held and held liable. That's kind of the way forward. And we I I wouldn't say that's a bad idea. Yeah, we've seen some results. I don't know if you've had a chance to watch the Empower episode one, but the in the seed groups that have done this notice of liability process, it hasn't stopped the agenda and it hasn't stopped um, mass deployments of smart meters. But what it's done is there's been around a dozen or so people that have, again, coincidentally resigned following being held directly liable uh, for large sums of money, just uh, a couple uh, dozen people doing, do, getting together as a group and doing this process. So it troublemaker a <laughs> little bit, a little bit. It's good. I rather, I like the practical stuff being more effective where you in, in using a practical, which I think you mentioned with these people that have found individuals liable in some sense. I don't know how that works exactly, but if you get them to quit, so I okay, I quit. I'm out of here. And you get and those are smart people usually, and they have to be on some of these companies because if you don't have a lot of smart people in some of these rock and rolling companies, they the companies can't work because they don't have they're idiots most of these executives. Uh, you lose your smart people, you lose your basis. Uh, that is a I think more effective than moralizing uh, with uh, with bromides like. Uh, you know, it's, but we, we want people, people first kind of thing. Yeah. I, 
it's great, but it doesn't move mountains. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We need to obviously make it land and speak their language. And, and like you say, John C. Dvorak says, uh, the, the asbestos of the 21st century, right? 5, <laughs> 5G. 5G is the asbestos of the 21st century. That's so true. Is it? The question is, is it with a question mark at the end, you know, and that's like, what? Uh Oh, yeah. So we'll go with that. Good. Well, John, thanks so much for, uh, for joining me today and just having this conversation um, and sharing your, yeah, it's good to be here. Yeah. So tell us, uh, just as we close here, tell us about your podcast and where people can reach you and follow you. Well, the No Agenda Show uh, is, uh, well, you can always follow me on Twitter, at The Real Dvorak, The Real Dvorak, D-V-O-R-A-K. Uh, and I need more followers. Uh, the noagendashow.com is the place you go to listen to the latest episode. It's twice a week, uh, three hours an episode. We deconstruct news stories. So we'll find some news stories that seem like they were planted by public relations or their native advertising. And we expose them. That's all we do pretty much. And then we have a lot of personal anecdotes since I'm working with Adam Curry, the uh, former VJ of MTV from years back, but he's a natural uh, and a very good at, at deconstructing news. It's yeah. like astonishing how good he is. And so that's six hours a week and we get mostly commuters listening. I also do DH Unplugged on Tuesdays, which is also a podcast you can download. And DH Unplugged is about the stock market. And Andrew Horowitz and I go over uh, various companies and what they're up to. And then we have our little stock. It's not stock tips. It's a, a game we play where we kind of pick stocks. Uh, you have to pick your own and uh, see how we do. And we were very good at that. Andrew Horowitz I, used to win the stock picking contest when MS Microsoft Money was in business. And they had this yearly competition for picking stocks. And Horowitz won. Uh, he's really good at it and he's a uh, uh, good at, and he's a money manager. So it's a very good show. So we have these two podcasts going on and then I'll crop up here and there like here on yeah. the show. Excellent. Well, I listened to one of your shows uh, a couple days ago and I was really impressed with you guys. First, first you have a sense of humor, you know, it's, it's like engaging and entertaining to, to listen to. And second, you don't pull any punches, you know, you're talking about the real stuff and Adam, you know, just like you said, I mean, he was so good at deconstructing arguments. He just dives right in. So it's so definitely a very, very good podcast helping to further and up level the conversation, I would say. Yeah. And we do have, we do make it entertaining. Unlike, I mean, there's other people that can try to do this stuff, but they're so dour. Oh, it's like, you can't listen. You get depressed listening to them, whatever they're saying. And so we try to avoid that, but we kind of have both the two of us know enough. We've been in broadcasting and on and off forever. So, you know, enough to do it right. But yeah, so noagendashow.com and dhunplugged.com are your two uh, URLs. Sounds great. Well, John, thanks for joining us again. Everyone, the links are in the description below this video. And this is, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's a new channel. Uh, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications. And we'll see you next time. Hey everyone, I'm Josh and I want to offer you these two free resources. At the top on the right is a link to my feature film documentary, Take Back Your Power 2017. I've just released it on YouTube. This is the 2017 updated version. Um, it's an award-winning documentary that is investigates and helps you to connect the dots on smart meters, on the smart meter agenda, and on specific actions that you can take. Secondly, I invite you to go to the website, takebackyourpower.net, sign up and immediately receive this brand new EMF reduction guide that I've written. It's going to give you five areas in which, five simple areas in which you can take direct, easy steps to reduce your EMF exposure and to increase your vitality. There's also powerful research links towards the end and there's three pages of specifically how to deal with your utility and action steps that you can do right now to deal with the smart meter on your home. So I hope you find these resources helpful and I welcome you on this journey toward empowerment and we'll see you again soon.